Right now, vitamin B1 or thiamine is the most underrated and overlooked nutrient with untapped clinical potential. How do I know this? Well, I've personally witnessed miracles. I've seen it have such a good effect on people who've been written off by previous doctors and practitioners as being merely mystery cases. So the potential benefits of using this nutrient in high doses are practically unknown, spare a handful of people. The question is, why is this nutrient so often overlooked? Well, in this video, we're gonna look at some of those reasons. Medical doctors are taught that the only people who are likely to have thiamine deficiency are either alcoholics, anorexics, people with eating disorders, or people who have recovered from some kind of surgery, including gastric surgery. Nutritional programs teach something similar, and even in functional or integrative medicine circles, most of the focus is placed on other B vitamins, such as B12, folate, and niacin. So overall, there is this myth that thiamine deficiency is a problem of the past. And let's look at exactly why that is. A deficiency in thiamine produces a condition called beriberi, which was originally documented in Japan. The Japanese relied heavily on brown rice for a long time as a dietary staple, but with the introduction of milling machinery in the early 1800s, they began polishing their rice and by the mid 1800s, white rice consumption was common, particularly among the upper classes. Unfortunately, within a few years, people were developing strange neurological, cardiovascular, and gastrointestinal diseases. These often occurred together, and this is now referred to as berry berry. This became a significant problem for the Japanese healthcare system, and many resources were devoted to finding its cause. They discovered that brown rice consumption or higher intake of foods which we now know are higher in thiamine content, could effectively alleviate this condition. It wasn't until 1926 that thiamine was isolated in the lab, originally being called antineuritic factor, by virtue of its ability to prevent beriberi. It soon became clear that through refining or processing foods, such as rice, the B vitamin content was lost and this was enough to induce a deficiency. And because of this, by the 1940s, fortification of refined foods or processed foods with synthetic forms of vitamins became widespread across the world. It was at this point that frank deficiency diseases supposedly became a thing of the past. From the 1950s onwards, the intake of ultra processed refined foods was becoming more and more popular and this was especially in the United States. If we fast forward to 2021, the accessibility of junk food and refined foods is extremely high. This unfortunately provides a perfect environment for the development of nutrient deficiencies, including berry berry. So it's essential to understand that thiamine requirements should be proportional to carbohydrate or sugar intake. More sugar increases the demand for thiamine. And not only does sugar deplete B1, but certain beverages can also inhibit the absorption through the gut. These include coffee, tea, and alcohol. Certain prescription drugs cause inactivation or wasting of thiamine. These are commonly prescribed, including metformin, flagyl, and certain diuretics. In fact, there are a wide variety of prescription medications which have been shown to deplete thiamine. Another major risk factor includes chronic digestive issues. This might include small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or malabsorptive disorders. The hypercatabolism found in severe or chronic infection and other illnesses raises the demand for metabolism. And wherever you have an increased demand on metabolism, this can be an antecedent or a trigger for beriberi. Aside from being documented in literature, each of those things is one of the common antecedents that I see leading up to someone developing symptoms of a thiamine deficiency. But the problem is, is that these symptoms can be so nonspecific and span across so many body systems that it makes it really difficult for practitioners to identify this condition. And why is it that someone can develop so many odd symptoms due to a lack of thiamine? Well, if we look at what thiamine does actually inside the cell, then it's pretty obvious. It ultimately comes down to the generation of cellular energy in the form of ATP. Thiamine sits at the gateway to oxidative energy metabolism in cells. Acting as a cofactor for two key enzymes, it is not only essential for burning glucose as fuel, 
but also proteins and fats. Both of the enzymes, which thiamine plays a central role in supporting, are considered rate-limiting enzymes. So when they stop working as they should, the entire process of energy production slows right down. Furthermore, activated thiamine also governs the activity of multiple other enzymes involved in energy metabolism. So it turns out this means that attempting to improve mitochondrial function when there is not enough thiamine in place becomes futile for many people. Because thiamine is so central to how cells make energy, this is also able to account for such widespread manifestations in different people. Subclinical beriberi can either manifest in the brain, central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, the heart and circulation, or it can only affect the gut and the enteric nervous system. And in this case, it produces a kind of paralysis of the digestive organs, which is often mistakenly thought to be caused by bacteria. In severe cases, it will affect all three systems and also many other systems as well, including the kidney, liver, muscles, and practically every other system in the body. And because of these widespread symptoms, it's often misdiagnosed as a variety of conditions, including fibromyalgia, idiopathic neuropathy, or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, CFS, SIBO, gastroparesis, or GERD, neurodegenerative diseases, and even certain types of cardiovascular diseases. And to make matters worse, if a practitioner does actually prescribe thiamine, it's usually nowhere near enough to have a therapeutic effect. In fact, it's thought by many that the amount that you find in a B-complex is sufficient to address a deficit. Unfortunately, this could not be further from the truth. For reference, the RDase is between 1 and 1.5 milligrams. That's what you're meant to get from food every day. The maximum that you will probably find in a multivitamin supplement is about 100 milligrams. The problem is, is that the average therapeutic dose of these forms is anywhere from 500 to 2000 times the RDA and at least five or 10 times what you would find in a multivitamin. And even then, the most common forms found in supplements are simply not the most bioavailable. This means that someone requires much higher doses to see any effects. Someone with some kind of genetic predisposition to poor thiamine transport will likely be much more responsive to very specific derivatives such as TTFD. But unfortunately, this form is practically unknown. And if by chance someone suspects thiamine deficiency, it's really difficult to spot with testing. This is generally because testing methods are quite poor. Most blood measurements only measure recent intake and are generally not reflective of total body status. Functional medicine lab testing is similarly unhelpful in many cases. So oftentimes a candidate for this therapy should be identified through symptom presentation and clinical history instead. To complicate matters even further, many people who are responsive to higher doses of thiamine might not even have a classical deficiency in the first place. Rather, thiamine supplementation is being used in a pharmacological way to stimulate enzyme activity to essentially kickstart energy metabolism instead. And so in these people, testing is probably not going to be all that accurate. In fact, in these people, a much better approach would be to look at the clinical history, look at the onset of symptoms, and look at the health condition. And since this therapy is remarkably safe and has a lot of potential, I truly hope that it starts to get the attention that it's deserved. So this is Elliot from EO Nutrition. If you like this video or you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. You can share it with others if you think that they may benefit from it. You can find my website www.eonutrition.co.uk. Find me on Facebook as EO Nutrition. And if that's all, then I will see you next time. <laughs>